India and Israel are changing our world and maybe changing parts of the world because this is a cooperation. It's a marriage really made in heaven, but we're implementing it here on earth. Palestine and Kashmir are more alike than you think, and here's why. With over half a million personnel deployed there by the Indian government, Kashmir is the most militarized place in the world and has been described as the highest altitude open air prison on earth. It's estimated that for every 12 civilians, there's one security personnel deployed. Now with the Indian government's abrogation of articles 370 and 35A, the people of Kashmir will no longer have the right to define their own permanent residence requirements and privileges, including land ownership, employment, and voting. Israel has long been a settler colonial state, and India appears swiftly to be headed in that same direction. Settler colonialism is an ongoing system of power that perpetuates the genocide and repression of indigenous peoples and cultures. It normalizes continuous settler occupation, exploiting lands and resources. Each time I have visited my family in Palestine, it's hard to ignore the steady expansion of Israeli settlements covering the hills of the West Bank. And as someone who has spent nearly every summer of my life visiting family in Kashmir, my heart is completely broken at the thought that I might see a similar sight in the beautiful valley. Both India and Israel claim to be democracies, but in Israel, only Jews are afforded the full rights and privileges of citizenship as per its nation state law, and legitimizes indefinite detention, house demolitions, censorship, and curfews for Palestinians by declaring the Palestinian territories to be under a state of emergency, and they have been as such since 1948. And despite the Indian government's insistence that it considers Kashmir to be an integral part of the Indian Union, its government has consistently undermined the rights of Kashmiris. For example, Kashmiris live under the shadow of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, or AFSPA, which grants special powers to Indian armed forces in so-called disturbed areas of which Kashmir has been a part since 1990. AFSPA provides impunity to military personnel for extrajudicial killings, torture, and rape. They want um, to make it really difficult for um, Palestinians and Kashmiris to establish and hold themselves to the land um, because a large uh, hope in both cases is not just occupation and colonialism, but also um, a cleansing, particularly of a population that wants sovereignty, self-determination, and to live in dignity. Relations between India and Israel are like never before. It's not merely cooperation in so many fields. It's genuine friendship. In the case of um, both uh, Modi and Netanyahu, you can see similarities in their role as uh, fascist and populist leaders, but also uh, leaders who um, push a rhetoric and are driven actually by an ideology that is ethno-nationalist. So in the case of India, it's Hindu nationalism. In the case of Israel, it's uh, Zionism. Both leaders have led their countries into a more right-wing authoritarian trajectory. They have opportunistically exploited communal divisions for the advancement of their own majoritarian policies. Since Modi's election in 2014, there has been a precipitous increase in violence against Muslims, untouchables, Christians, and Sikhs. Under Netanyahu, we have seen the passage of the nation-state bill, which holds it the right to exercise national self-determination. We also face common challenges. And the first of it is to defeat the forces of terror that rampage through the world and threaten both our countries. So we must stand together in this battle. Just like Palestine, the occupation of Kashmir has been whitewashed with a vocabulary of security language. Native resistance or protest is frequently decried as terrorism and aggression, while the unjust occupation is propagandized as benign and for security purposes. In both Palestine and Kashmir, the specter of Islamic extremism and terrorism is used by the occupiers to terrify their public uh, into popular support for the occupations. Both occupations provide impunity to their agents. For example, the Israeli judiciary generally ignores instances of violence perpetrated by settlers against Palestinians, uh, and in Kashmir, civilian courts are prohibited from prosecuting Indian personnel for their crimes unless they receive permission from the central government, which has never happened.
India and Israel have cultivated increasingly close political and military links in recent years, and India is the largest market of Israeli arms. Between 2014 and 2018, in fact, India accounted for 46% of Israel's arms exports. The arms sales uh, quickly evolved into a sort of collaboration and occupation. In effect, Israel and India began trading occupational strategies from their similar experiences of suppressing popular resistance and dissent in Palestine and Kashmir. The struggle for self-determination is shared between both peoples, Kashmiris and Palestinians, along with so many other communities around the world, and must be respected. On my visits to Palestine and Kashmir, places embedded firmly in my heart, I'm reminded of the words of legendary Kashmiri poet Mahjur. I was not like this always. I was independent. The grand ruins, the majestic stones, stand witness to it.